Have you been a victim of narcissistic abuse? This question may sound heavy, but it's a necessary starting point for understanding this complex and often misunderstood form of abuse. Narcissistic abuse is a unique kind of emotional torment, perpetrated by individuals who exhibit narcissistic traits. They are often charming, charismatic, and seemingly caring, making it difficult for their victims to recognize the abuse. Narcissists use manipulation and control tactics to dominate their relationships. They may make you feel loved one moment and worthless the next, creating a confusing, unstable environment. This roller coaster of emotions can severely erode your self esteem and self worth over time. The impact of narcissistic abuse is profound, leaving deep emotional wounds that require time and compassion to heal. It's important to remember that the abuse you've experienced isn't a reflection of your worth, but a manifestation of the abuser's insecurities and shortcomings. Know that you are not alone and you are not to blame for the abuse you endured. In the aftermath of narcissistic abuse, self-compassion becomes a beacon of hope. This is not about pretending everything is fine. Rather, self-compassion is about acknowledging your pain, embracing your emotions, and offering yourself the same kindness you would extend to a dear friend in a similar situation. Think of self-compassion as a soothing balm for your wounded spirit, a gentle voice whispering words of comfort when the echoes of the past become overwhelming. It's about allowing yourself the space to grieve, to heal and to grow. It's about understanding that it's okay to not be okay and that healing is not a race but a journey. Self-compassion invites you to rebuild your self-esteem brick by brick, to replace the toxic narratives of the past with empowering affirmations of self-love and self-worth. It's a powerful tool in your recovery toolkit helping you navigate the tumultuous seas of emotions and guiding you towards the shore of healing and peace. Self-compassion is your ally in the journey of recovery. The first step to cultivating self-compassion is to acknowledge your pain. This is crucial in your journey towards healing. Picture your pain as an old friend knocking at your door, asking to be heard. It's easy to turn away, to ignore the knock, to push the pain deeper within. But the truth is, by doing so, we're only prolonging the healing process. Instead, invite your pain in. Sit with it. Allow yourself to feel. You may grieve for the relationship that was, for the time you feel was lost, for the emotional toll it took on you. And that's okay. Your feelings are valid. Your tears are not a sign of weakness, but a testament to your strength and resilience. They are a powerful release of hurt, a silent echo of your journey, and a step towards healing. Remember, it's okay to feel. Your emotions are valid. Next, we need to reframe our self-talk. In the aftermath of narcissistic abuse, the abuser's words can echo in our minds, sowing seeds of self-doubt and inadequacy. But remember, these words reflect their reality, not yours. This is where the power of positive self-talk comes into play. Think of it as your internal dialogue, the conversation you have with yourself. If it's negative, it can be destructive, but if it's positive, it can be an empowering force. Start by identifying the negative thoughts that circulate in your mind. Once you've identified them, challenge them. Replace them with affirmations of kindness and self-acceptance. For instance, if you find yourself thinking, I'm not good enough, counteract this with, I am enough just as I am. Or if you catch yourself thinking, I'll never find love again, replace it with, I am deserving of a healthy, loving relationship. Remember, you are worthy of love, respect and healthy relationships. Another essential step in cultivating self-compassion is practicing mindfulness. It's about being fully present in the moment, noticing our emotions, thoughts and sensations without judgment. Mindfulness is like a gentle spotlight, illuminating our inner landscape, helping us recognize our needs and guiding us to respond with kindness and understanding. One way to cultivate mindfulness is through meditation. It's like taking a deep, refreshing breath for the mind, helping us to pause, observe, and just be. It's about sitting quietly with ourselves, noticing our breath, our thoughts, our emotions, and simply allowing them to be. Breathwork is another powerful tool, a bridge connecting our minds and bodies. By focusing on our breath, we anchor ourselves in the present moment, creating a tranquil space where healing can begin. It's like whispering to ourselves, it's okay, I'm here for you. In essence, mindfulness is about cultivating a warm, nurturing relationship with ourselves. Mindfulness allows us to respond to our needs with compassion, 
Lastly, celebrate your small victories and prioritize self-care. In the process of healing, it's essential to recognize that each step forward, no matter how small, is a significant victory. It could be as simple as getting out of bed, making a meal, or taking a walk. Perhaps it's saying no to a toxic relationship or yes to a new healthier one. Each of these moments is a testament to your resilience and strength, and they deserve to be celebrated. Now let's talk about the importance of self-care. Nurturing your mind, body and soul is not an act of indulgence, but rather a cornerstone of recovery. Self-care could mean preparing a nutrient-rich meal, taking a relaxing bath or reading a good book. It might be going for a run, practicing yoga or simply enjoying a peaceful moment in nature. Remember, every step forward is a victory. You are worthy of care and kindness. In this journey of cultivating self-compassion, Remember that you are not alone. Seeking support is not a sign of weakness, but an act of courage and strength. Surrounding yourself with understanding friends, family or a professional therapist can create a comforting and safe space for you to express your emotions and receive guidance. Sharing your experiences can be incredibly liberating. It helps you validate your feelings and offers a sense of relief, knowing that others understand what you're going through. Moreover, as you connect with others who have walked a similar path, you can learn from their experiences, gain fresh perspectives, and draw inspiration for your own healing journey. Remember, it's okay to lean on others. It's okay to ask for help. Your healing journey is your own, but you don't have to walk it alone. You are part of a community, a network of support that is here for you. With time, patience, and dedication, you will emerge stronger and ready for healthier relationships.